Hello, welcome to episode 57 of How to Play Like a Watt Pro. Today I have a replay in the Chieftain on Murrow from the North Spawn. So first let's uh, analyze the matchup we're in. So we're in a tier 10 game. They have one artillery, two light tanks. Their light tanks, the main thing you want to watch out for when, when you're on this side is that they play in this area here whether or not they'll play in here because really their op their options are to play here to go up here aggressively or to play like in this area here um, then the other thing to look at well to be honest there's not many other things that I would consider that will influence where I'm going to go in the start of the battle um, regardless of how many artillery they have, regardless of how many light tanks they have, I almost always start off my battles on Murrow nor Spawn. It doesn't even really matter what tank I'm in, I almost always start it right here, right here. So unless unless I'm in a light tank, if I'm in a light tank or a really fast medium tank like a CS, then I might go here. But besides that, basically every other tank I play, excluding like a few exceptions like maybe a mouse or something, I'll almost always go here. And the reason why I do that is from this spawn, if any of your teammates go to this bush right here, they'll spot enemies crossing here. And if anybody gets greedy and takes this, this high ground route, so they're on the high ground and they're trying to cross into the forest, you can shoot them for free from right here. And so at the start of every single Murrow game, when I'm in a random battle, if I'm not in a light tank, so I'm not going to go here myself, I just ask my teammates, can you please go here so if we have light tanks or if we have fast and medium tanks i'll literally just type in chat please take this bush and spot or something along those lines and i'll just ping this bush and then i'll ping this twice now do i do that this battle i'm not sure um okay i do so i i say i ask him for help and then i ping the I ping E7 and then I ping this twice, literally just like I said. I just don't type it in chat, but actually I do. I literally type it in chat. Spot from there, please EBR. I ping E7. And unfortunately, he's not going there. And so I have a choice here. If I go to this position right now, looking at the mini map, there's not a single of my team not a single one of my teammates is going to this position and the entire point of going to this position is that this position will spot for you and so if nobody is spotting here there's really no reason at all to play in this spot here you're, you're not gonna get any early shots because nobody's spotting for you so my decision right here the decision I'm faced with is do I go here myself and try to try to spot enemies crossing myself now the reason why I usually don't do this is if you go here, enemy artillery will easily shoot you and they almost always will shoot you because you're going to be the first tank that's spotted on the map. And as I said in my Sand River video a couple, one or two videos ago, if you're the first tank that's spotted, you can almost always bet that the first arty shell is going to be in your general direction. So. I have to weigh a couple of options here. Do I just take the arty shell and trade it for any potential spots and or damage that I get on people crossing? And so what are the different uh, variables that I need to look at here? So first of all, is there any tank on the enemy team that I'm even going to spot on the cross? And the answer is yes. So if they had a bunch of medium tanks, um, there's a pretty, I wouldn't say there's a low chance, but there's less of a chance that I'm going to spot them on the cross because they get there quicker and I'm a chieftain. I'm kind of slow. So I get here and what am I going to do? Spot an STB? The STB is already going to be like here or something by the time I get there. So, but they have double T57 heavy and a chieftain and a Wheezy 5A. Those are all tanks that I can spot on the cross. And then the biggest thing 
to consider is the fact that the enemy light tanks could potentially push into here. And that happens pretty frequently. I would say it happens about 50% of the time that enemy light tanks will push into here. And if they do push into here, I'm a chieftain and they're a light tank. I can basically poke on them and I'm hauled down on them. And my turret is really good. So I can basically just farm them for free. And I would say that's the primary factor that... Ch that uh, caused me to choose to push to here in this battle so I am I'm almost 90% sure that I pushed to here in this battle I don't actually remember but I assume I do because they have two light tanks and so I want to farm their light tanks it just in case they push to this area here because if they do push to here then they're basically just free kills and that's exactly what happens I wasn't quite ready for that shot but uh, we do spot their ABR in this area, and basically if I poke here, I can just shoot them for free. Now, as you saw, I turned my turret to the side here. The reason why I did that is there's two different positions that you can get shot from. So you can get shot from here, through this gap here, or you can get shot from here. Um, now, no one's going to be here unless they're really fast, like a CS or a, or a light tank in the beginning of the battle. But there can be tank destroyers who play here, so you just need to be wary of that. Now the tank destroyers here cannot shoot you once you're in this general area here, because this this ridge is in the way. But if you try to leave here, or if you're entering here, they can shoot you through this this uh, this path right here. So that's something you need to be very careful of. When you're playing in this area, always make sure that you get unspotted before you cross this gap right here if you're trying to leave always make sure you do that otherwise there's a pretty good chance you're just gonna get hit in the face now I load HE here I shoot him in the face and I get like a 600 roll which is pretty nice <laughs> I decide to shoot the SCB now there's the already shot I was talking about I'm basically guaranteed to get hit by already here in this situation if you look at the minimap who else is spotted well, maybe the 268 by the Sheridan, but the 268 is basically already safe. The EBR is spotted, but the already is not going to shoot an EBR. He's too fast. So I'm the only really available target for him. I'm going to get hit by already, and I, I know that, but I decided to just take the hit because I think it's worth it in order to get this early game damage in spotting. Now, why do I shoot the STB in this situation? Well, first of all, I was pretty sure... I'm pretty sure when I last saw the EBR, he was on like 400 health or something. Could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure he was. But the thing is, I have a chance of shooting this EBR again. Like, even if I shoot the STB, there's a good chance that I'm going to be able to hit the EBR even after that on my second shot. There's basically no chance that I shoot the EBR and then hit the STB. Because this STB, he's making a huge mistake right here. He's poking way too high up and this guy here in the position that I like to take very often he can shoot the STB and so what's most likely going to happen is that 140 is going to hit the STB and then the STB is going to back off or at least the STB will realize that he's making a mistake and he'll back off and he'll at the very least be hauled down so it's going to be hard to snipe his Capola from that distance so that's why I decided to shoot the STB first and I get a penning HE shot on him for full damage, which is great. Now let's see whether I get to shoot the EBR again. And the answer is yes, I do. And as you can see, the STB backed off. So if I had done the reverse, if I had shot the EBR first and then shot the STB, there's a pretty good chance that I would have only gotten one shot on the EBR and that's it. Now I'm keeping in I'm keeping in the back of my mind the Artie's reload. Now I think I I think he has about a 15 second reload at this point. So I'm just thinking I'm going to get unlit here. And so I'm what I'm thinking is the next time I get lit there's a chance I'll get shot by the Artie, especially if I get lit very very soon from now. If I wait, then there's a good chance that these guys over here on my team will get lit and then the Artie will shoot them instead. So I want to stay on lit for the time being, just so that I don't get hit by the arty. But I see that the enemy is pushing the 1-2 line with their T-57 heavies. 
And so there is actually a way to sometimes get damage on them. And the way that you do that is you first of all will shoot down this building right here. So let me let me show you with the edge of my reticle. I think it's this building right here. You shoot down this building, and then if they if they're in this area right here, you can get a shot. If they over poke on this ridge, you can also get a shot, but you will get lit in return, keep that in mind. But I forget about them and I well I don't completely forget about them, but I I put them there priority to the side because I see that my team has actually spotted these guys in the back. I'm not sure how. Probably the Fosh B spotted them. Or maybe, I don't know. I honestly don't know how all these guys are spotted, but... They get lit, is my point. And so I, I decided to shoot them. Which is, you know, pretty obvious. If you get a free shot, then you're obviously going to change your attention to the free damage in front of your face. But I have to be a little bit careful because these guys, they can push up here. And if they just over poke on me very stupidly, like up here or on this corner, then they can't actually hit me. Now I did get lit and there's a good chance that the arty is going to shoot these guys. But there is a small chance that the arty will focus, his, will change where he's aiming and focus his, his attention on me. Now if I had to bet, I would say that he's going to shoot over here. I don't actually remember, but we'll see in a second probably. Yep. Literally one second later, he shoots over here. Like, I, like when I'm re-watching these replays, a lot of the time I don't actually remember what happened. But I can basically assume what's going to happen based on the information I've been given. So that's kind of like what I did in this situation here. And that's, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons why I think it's helpful to watch these videos in general is... You can take what I'm saying and you can make generalizations based off what I'm saying and learn from those generalizations. And then when you see one of those generalizations in your battle, it will lead you to some conclusion that will make you, uh, make you play in a certain way. And more often than not, that play will be beneficial and it will work out for you and you'll do well. Or at least better than you would have otherwise. So here, in between my shots, I'm I'm watching the T-57 heavies, making sure they don't clip me, but they're completely oblivious to me. And so I, I change my attention to them, and I start shooting them. Because they're, they're easier shots than the Fosh B. And they're bigger threats to me as well, because I can stay safe from the Fosh... Or not the Fosh B, the 4005. I can stay safe from the 4005, but I can't stay safe from these guys if they just poke up and start shooting me. Now I realize I'm I'm basically getting lit very often by these 57 heavies, but the arty just fired like 20 seconds ago, so it's not a big deal because he's still reloading. He has like a 40 second reload or 40, 43 seconds or something like that. So I'm just looking for free damage on the on the chieftain here. I'm not lit. I know that for a fact, or at least I'm very sure that I'm not lit right now so I'm not really worried about the 4k5 shooting me in the side of the turret or whatever but if you pay attention I have pretty good situational awareness in this situation to be honest uh, I realized that we're losing the forest and when you lose the forest on this map unless you have a ton of tanks back here you cannot stay here you're just gonna get they're gonna take all the way up the zero line they're gonna get up here and then they're gonna start shooting you in the face or they'll just end up pushing you right through and they'll just jump right on top of you. They'll just start poking here and shooting you. Even if they bleed heavily for it, it's not good for your DPGs because it'll just kill you. Even if they die for it. So, I'm already thinking, even this early on in the game, when there's still 13 enemy tanks alive, I'm thinking, I need to get to A3. That's what I'm thinking. And I already know this this early in the battle, that my best chance of getting off the most damage possible is to go to a3 now why is that because a3 can farm anything that pushes down the one two line especially like in this area here um if anybody pushes to this ridge which is very common after you clear the forest from the south they push to this spot here then you're also hold down on them and they shoot and you shoot them 
those are probably the two main reasons why. You're basically just safe from everything and you're hull down on basically everything and you're guaranteed to get off at least a few shots, probably like three or four shots before you die. And so now I'm just gunning it out of here. I don't have turbo, unfortunately. I brought HP this game. But as you'll see, it works out for me anyways because I'm fast enough to escape. And as you'll see, if I stayed here, I definitely would have died very quickly. Um, my teammates are running away. They would have taken a line and just shot me in the side or they would have pushed up here as the chieftain's doing and killed me. Now the reason why you don't want to stay here and the reason why you do want to go to A3, which is this position here, is from here you're kind of caught in a crossfire from anybody who plays in these buildings and anybody who plays here. So I know for a fact that they're going to end up at A6, like this area here, and they're going to start shooting this position. So it would be kind of reckless to stay here, as my teammates are doing, because you basically know you're going to be in a crossfire. Um, even if you try to get safe from A6 and you go in here and they have nobody here, even in, even then, if they poke this corner here, they're still going to have shots on you. So it's just a bad idea to stay there. It's much better to play more passive and to back off to A3. And as you can see, our 2 and 5 b makes the correct play. He backs off, so good on good for him. He made the correct decision. Now, the next place I'm going to be looking for damage is right here. Because this is the logical progression for the enemy team. This is where they're almost always going to push up to. It's m way more likely that they're going to push up and overpeak this corner here than that. Than that they're going to push one line or something or push a line. A line is a little bit more likely than one line, but this is most common. So that's where I'm looking for the damage right now. As you'll see, I'm knocking over trees sideways like this so that I'm, I'm double bushed against this spot here. There's still a chance I'll get lit from there um, because if these trees are 25% camo, then they'll probably light me anyway. If these trees are 50% camo, then I won't get lit. I don't actually know what they are. Um, I was I had like two bushes between me and the 140, I think. So you can't really judge what these camo values are based off of, based on that alone. But at least as far as I know, every single piece of foliage in the game is either 25% or 50% camo, and then there's like a couple that are 0% for some reason. I don't know why. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm almost positive that's the case. But as you see, I don't actually get lit, so I'm pretty sure these, well, both of these are in the way, so I can't actually tell what percentage they are right now. But as you can see, they're over peaking this corner, and I'm, I've am i already got three shots in because of that. I'm trying to focus fire to take out the STB, but unfortunately he backs off. Now here, I still want to kill the STB if possible, but I see that he's not poking. Go for a shot on that guy, just completely misses. Now I should be lit, and as you can see, I am. Now right here, I'm thinking... I just need to get out as much damage as I can. As you can see, we have less than a third of their HP. Probably should have shot the 57 Heavy. I didn't realize he was in the open here. I definitely should have shot the 57 Heavy, but... I didn't realize he was in the open, to be honest. I thought he was behind the house. And so the reason why I'm aggressively peeking here is because if I just stay poked down, just afraid of taking a single shot or something, then there's basically, basically what's going to happen is they're going to kill all my teammates and then I'm only going to poke as soon as all my teammates are already dead. And at that point, everyone's attention will be on me and I'll die. If I poke now, I can maybe trade one for one over and over again. And then if I do that, I'll get off maybe like four shots, which, you know, that's that's not too bad. But unfortunately, something I overlooked and something that I really honestly probably couldn't have predicted is their 4K5 was sitting over here. 
And now, I technically probably should have known that because he was less spotted in the east, but to be honest, that's... It's pretty hard to know that he would be over here. But yeah, I get set on fire as well, which is really unfortunate because... If I didn't get set on fire, then I would have got one shot off here. I would have backed off and played way more passive because I'm a one shot, and then I probably would have got off two or three more shots. But yeah, I got lit on fire, which really sucks. And we lose. But even though we lost, I had a pretty good game. Uh, let me show you the end plays real quick. So I did 6,100 damage, 2,800 spotting, and only 500 base XP because we lost. But either way, pretty pretty epic game. Well, not epic, but pretty good game. 9k combined, that's good. So yeah, hopefully you learned something about Murrow, North Spawn. Hopefully you learned something about... What was it we were talking about? About like... Expecting artillery shells. Uh, realizing when you need to run away. And I guess the importance of E3 when you're losing. Hopefully you caught onto those concepts and you learned from them. If you didn't already know them before, that is. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.